Hi, this is Yanni. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at how we can use loop within event transform to modify an array. So here I have a HTTP request to get spells. When I go ahead and run it and take a look at the event data, I'll see in here that there's 319 results. And so there's a bunch of different spells in here, Awaken, Bane, Blight, uh, Call Lightning, so comma motions. So there's a bunch of different things in here, but we have index, name, and URL. And I actually only want there to be name when I am gonna reference this later. So how can I get rid of index and URL? So I'm pulling in an event transform action, connecting it from my get spells. And then the next thing that I wanna do is on the right hand side in my properties panel, flip on the loop. From here, I'm going to reference get spells dot body dot results. So that's the array that I'm going to be referencing. And if I just went ahead and I re-emitted this last event from get spells, I will see in the event transform action when I look at the array in here, all it says is message. This is an automatically generated message from times. That's because every time I'm looking through the array, I'm looking at each of those spells and then it's printing this message of this is an automatically generated message from times. So it's going through those 300 plus spells and it is just printing this message, but that's not what I want. So the first thing I'm gonna do is change this from an object by clicking the brackets and then going to text. And then in here, I'm gonna click on the plus and then value to pull up my formulas. And then I'm going to type out loop. So loop is going to allow me to reference things that are happening in that array. So I'm gonna do loop dot value dot name. And you'll see acid arrow on the bottom right hand corner. So I know it's just referencing that value altogether. All right, so I'm just gonna click off of that. And then what I wanna do now is in the top where it gets spells are, I'm gonna click on that, hit the three dots, and then I'm gonna re-emit last event. And let's take a look at the event transform action now. In the payload, we will now see that it just says the name of the spell. So it doesn't have the key value pairing and it doesn't have the three different objects that we have from the get spell here. So it doesn't have the index, name, or URL. So we're essentially taking that array and then we're reformatting it to just give us the information that we want. All right, let's hit the text and change this to an object. And I'm gonna just call this name of the spell. And then I'm gonna hit the plus and I wanna add in another item into this array. And let's actually get the, the number of letters that are in the spell. So for whatever reason, let's just do number of letters in the spell. And I just wanna show something real quick. If we do the plus and value. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna grab the loop dot value dot name again, but we're going to use a function to figure out how many, how many letters there are. So at the beginning, I'm just going to write size and I'm going to click on that function. It's going to wrap loop dot name that value and I'm going to see 10. So that's how many letters there are in that given spell. So quickly we can add in multiple items. And you know what? Uh, another thing that I'm going to do is hit that plus button to add in another object. And I wanna figure out what the index of the array that we're in. So index of array, I'm going to do loop. And instead of dot value, I'm actually gonna do dot index. And this is just gonna tell me in that array, what, where does this fall? Like this spell, is it zero, one, two, three, four, five? Like when does it actually happen in that list? Then let's go back to get spells and let's re-emit that last event. When I look at the event transform now, I look at the array, it's been updated. So I have the name of the spell, number of letters in the spell, and I have the index of the array. So I've completely transformed the original array that we had with the different objects. And I'm just taking some of that data and I'm making some modifications as I'm going through. And here we can see what the original looked like, where it just says index, name, and URL, which didn't really give me the information that I was hoping for or looking for. That's all we have for today's how-to. Hope you enjoyed the content and have a great rest of your day.